Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Mike's Garage. So in this episode, we need to put some, some oil in the transmission of red because if you remember in a previous video, we changed the transmission filter, but now we got to top it up. Now, if you've already added the two extra quarts like they recommend, you shouldn't have to add any more because you can lose just a little bit and because it's two quarts full anyways. But I have not done that, so I need to bring red down and, um, and figure out how we're gonna get this oil in it. Now, some people, you can jack up the side to I think uh, 16 degrees and put oil in that way, but that kind of sketches me out. You know, because what happens if it slips or if your if your um, floor jack is on an angle and it slides? So, so we're gonna do it the other way by pulling the trunk liner out and trying to get under the airbox to the top of the transmission. So that's what we're gonna do. But first, we gotta take uh, Prince out, which is the 1964 C2. Turn on the uh, the underglow, the lift lights. I always like to check my exhaust and just make sure everything is tight, you know? Because you don't want anything to rattle and come loose. Not that it has or I think it will, but you never know. Look at that X-pipe. <laughs> and it's almost April, which means it's almost drive your Corvette weather. So as soon as they finish sweeping the roads, then we can uh, get some actual insurance and get these babies out driving. So anyways, let's take the cover off, fire up uh, Prince and uh, take them out. Now this is my original car cover I got back in the 90s. I had a 1995 Nissan 240SX. Real cool car. The only problem is somebody, the only problem is somebody stole it and set fire to it. Yeah, kind of disappoints me. cars actually and that's how I take the cover off now one of the things that I do on this car is I disconnect the battery it's just one of those um, is that gonna go all the way up yes it will um, just a simple blade connector now I don't really need it for uh, battery drain but well, I guess I kind of do because this car has its original analog clock that still works and I don't want to wreck the clock because the second hand turns all the time so uh, it's pretty cool and if we look at the clock now I don't know if you guys can see that the second hand is turning so that's the biggest reason why I disconnect the clock because they're known to wear out over time because they just keep going round and round and round. So rather than just put a battery tender on it, disconnect the battery, save your clock. And I put a club on it because, you know, more safety, the merrier. The better. The better, the merrier. Okay, I love this car. It is so cool. I do have to get the carburetor sorted though, so it runs a little better and doesn't get quite as hot. Cause it's fun to drive, but it's not fun when it acts up like that, so. But I'm also gonna open the door because she's a stinky girl. There we go, let's, one, two. There we go. The one thing I don't know is about carburetors as much, and I've probably given it too much gas. There we go. I think I'll just sit here for a minute and admire it and let it warm up. Okay. Pull her out. Oh, 
There we go. Such a beautiful car. You know, there's nothing more classic than a 1964. 1960s, really. C2 Corvette in red. Like, this is the dream car. I just love it. Sometimes I think maybe I should sell it or whatever and get a Z06, like a new one, because the new ones are so nice to drive. But I'll never get another one or be able to afford another one of these if I do, I'm sure. So, yeah. Listen to that. Old school cool, baby. And then that's new school cool. <laughs> Two-hand operation. I might move this lift over by the door just so that, because I'm kind of stuck in the corner here and I could put the pickup and camper over here, put the cars over by the door because that's, uh, you know, we're not really in storage mode anymore. We're into play with your car mode um, because the middle of April is usually when I insure everything and then that way if you put six months on, it takes you to the middle of October, which is, you know, six months of good old driving. But gotta make sure I pay attention because once I didn't pay attention and one dog went in and <laughs> started to lean and, you know, I only had the most expensive car on the lift. Make sure I'm not gonna squash any extension cords. The other thing I'm gonna do is pull Princess out of the corner. So I'm gonna pull her out, get the camper out, rearrange things, put the tractor outside and uh, get them in a driving position. And talking about a driving position, we might as well take this one for a rip around the block. It's actually insured all year round, so, <laughs> so we can drive it on a Sunday. Let's close the doors. All right, let's take this baby for a little rip around the block. Ugh before we, uh... I didn't give it the two pumps. One, two, there we go. Yeah, we'll go for a rip around the block before we uh, tackle the uh... <clears throat> adding two quarts to the C8. We store this with premium fuel in it so it doesn't get gummy. I definitely think it makes a big difference. Roads are still a bit dirty, so we're not taking it any further than that until they get them sweeped. It's a bugger about winter when they sand the roads. Okay, back to the task at hand. Rule number one, <laughs> take anything off that could have a zipper. And two, grab the key, because I can't get into the back without the key. <laughs> oof, oof de me. And I'm also wearing sweatpants today for the same reason, so that there's no belt buckle, no buttons. So if I'm laying over the car, I don't scratch it. Okay, so I've never done this, so we're gonna learn together. I pop the trunka. And now, oh, it smells so good in here. Now we, we pull it out. How do we pull it out? I think it's like, I don't know. How do these, oh, it just unscrews. Okay. Well, that's easy. I can do that. Eh. Undo my net. I wonder if, maybe I only have to take the back portion off. 
no, no, it comes, I think it's the whole thing. So I'll finish unscrewing these. There we go. It just pulls up from under there. And I guess you could, could just pull it down. Really? Oh yeah. Okay, well, let's pick up. Oh yeah, and I dropped it already. Let's take this stuff out. <sighs> Cloth and uh, set it over here on the car cover to pr protect Princess. And uh, see how this comes out. And just. Oh my gosh. That is so easy. I thought this was gonna be a lot harder and more involved, but clearly it's not. We'll just put it on the C, Ooh, put it on the C7, yeah. There. So now, what do we got there? Danger, do not, do not activate manual park release. Hmm. Oh, carbon dioxide. <coughs> So, I wonder if those are magnets. Yep. So that was easy. Now we just have to take out uh, that panel. I'm not a huge fan of using power tools um, in sensitive places. So I'm just gonna use hand tools because, you know, power tools, they work great and it's faster, but, and probably undoing it is okay but definitely for doing it up, we're just using our hand tools. And I'm just gonna set them down here in the back because they can't go anywhere. Okay, all the screws are out. Now, you can hear it unsticking because it's got a seal. Oops. <laughs> Oopsie daisies. There, that was easy. I've seen people put more uh, more um, heat um, heat guard, like Dynamat or something like that, <clears throat> because the trunk definitely gets really hot. Well, it gets it gets good and warm, but when you see that your exhaust is right there, it's really a not a wonder. So we're looking for. A gold colored plug that's up there. Um, actually, you know what? I think I was going to say I have some kill mat I could put on there, but I don't think I want to do that because the kill mat has um, the uh, what do you call it? The butyl on the back, and that would probably melt. So if a person was going to put something, you definitely want to make sure it's, uh, you know, not going to catch fire. So. Okay, how do we pull this sucker out now? We got, we got some screws there. I think we pull these out first. So I'll go get some wrenches. Okay, so these appear to be 10 millimeters. And then I think the uh, airbox ones are eight millimeters. Have to be careful not to drop a screw because then I'll have to take the under tray off and I really don't want to do that. Maybe I should have done this before I took the under tray off. Oh, that was easy. I just... Yeah. You can see that just slips right in there. Not hard at all. So now I'll undo the other side. And let's pull these out. I already cracked them loose. So I think I can use, this one's a little stiffer than the other one. Probably because it goes into the aluminum housing. got that little plug unplugged. 
And then I'm gonna see if I can pop these out, these little Christmas tree push-in connector thingies, just because they're attached to the air box. <clears throat> or maybe we'll try and leave them. Okay, now I'm gonna open the other roof hatch, but I'm gonna close this because I think if it's open, you can chip your paint and we don't wanna risk that. So, yeah. But how much I love this car. Let's turn the power on. Oh yeah, look at that. <clears throat> and roof up or down. There we go. That should be good. Okay, so there's our air box there. So I think we'll pull off the engine cover to uh, gain access to the top of the engine, which is kind of cool because I've never actually seen the engine before. So like a dingus, I locked my screwdriver in the trunk and apparently when this is up, when the top is, the convertible top thing is up, you, you can't, you can't open your trunk. So I guess you gotta take it up, put it down, put it down, take it up. Okay, so I assume I just lift up the back and pull out, drop down, pull out. Ta-da! <sighs> okay. Now, <laughs> how, how do we do this? How do we do this, guys? Oh my gosh, I can see I can see it. I don't know if you guys can see it down there, but I can, I can kind of, I can kind of see one. Doesn't look like it's easy to get at. Actually, if I reach my hand down in there, can almost get to it. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe I should have got the dealer to do this. <laughs> okay, this side is much easier. You can see it uh, right behind this wire right there. So the two bolts that hold the air filter on there, loosen those off and I should be able to get at the top oil fill plug, so. <sighs> and there's lots of wires like that are attached. So I think the goal is to like leave the air box kind of in there, but just lift it up. So since that's the goal, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, I put the top <clears throat> down <clears throat> so I can open this. And now I know where that is it's just on the on the front side so i'm gonna grab all my tools that i think i might need okay <clears throat> pulled all my tools out of the trunk so now i will open the convertible hatch again so that i can get at those front screws Okay, look at my beautiful engine. I like that. Built by Chevrolet Tono Tonawa, the number one team. I like those valve covers too. <laughs> I was wondering, what do you guys think of the <clears throat> clear engine covers? Or pardon me, the clear, you know, the clear things so you could see the windows so you can see your engine. I mean, I think it's kind of cool because you got your mid engine, but, but you can't see it. 
But um, anyways, let's, uh, let's crawl down in there. Now I put tape around my um, Torx bit so it doesn't fall off. And if we look, you can see, uh, there, we can see the one we need. So I think I can get it with a long extension, but I don't know if I have a long enough extension. So let's, let's try it with what I got. With what I got, ow! Oh, look at that, holds my light pretty good. I'll just reach down there. And uh, at least this one has more room. Not a lot of room, but more room. There we go. Again, I think all we want to do is just lift it up, but we'll see. At the rate things are going, maybe we'll have to take it out for it to be easy. Well, I managed to get on the other bolt, but my arm's squished. I'm standing on my tippy toes. I'm not looking forward to trying to put this back in. This one's got more stuff in the way. It's got me really thinking maybe going through the side is the better alternative. Even though it's sketchy as all get out. You can hear it just inch, inch, inch. Okay, got the other bolt out. <clears throat> now, let's see how much this air box will will move. Oops a bit. I think if I look, I'm gonna undo that hose clamp right there <clears throat> so we can just pull it back. Okay, so I loosened the airbox clamp, but I did a stupid thing. I got grease on my shirt. <laughs> I was leaning over onto this, uh, you know, gear that has grease on it. So maybe when you do this, put something over that so you don't get it on your shirt. And here I was thinking I was being good to protect the side of the car. And then I'm like, where did I get grease to get it on the side of the car? <sighs> yeah. Sometimes I'm an idiot. I'm just going to say it. Andrew's going to be pissed. This is a brand new shirt from the Corvette Museum. Uh, there, top is down. I think on a coupe this would be much easier. Well, I know it would be much easier because then you would just have to, uh, you know, open the hatch. So, if this worked as planned, we should be able to kind of lift it up. And see, I can touch it. Maybe we can kick it to the side. Oh, this is not. Not as easy as previously described. Or do we just pull it right out? I don't know. It kind of goes up and in. The heat shield is a bit of a bugger. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so then we can. we can pull it back except we got to pull these off okay well let's go back to trying that okay so I tried pulling these out and they broke these little Christmas tree things so I'm just gonna put them back on with a tie strap um, and I'm just gonna wedge up <clears throat> the air box because there's clippies like that on the front side and we're not taking them off but if we hold this up and you look under there, you can see the brass filler. So we're close. 
I might have to go buy a fitting to fit in there, but uh, anyways, let's get something to wedge this up so we can uh, try taking the filler off. On second thought, <clears throat> I'm gonna lift the hatch again, <sighs> look in the front, and if I have to cut those, make sure I don't hit the door on that thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I've got tie straps, so if, if it's just a case of cutting them and retying it up, I'm gonna do that, because I don't wanna make a mess. So I made an executive decision. I'm gonna cut those straps. <clears throat> so there's this plug, and there's this one here and that one there. Now these are actually easy to pop off without wrecking them. So we will do that. Just like that. Using a big screwdriver. And I need two hands here. What can I do? Oh. Can you pull that out? Just pull? Yeah. There it goes. There. So now I just have a tie strap there to cut and one down on the bottom. And then that way we can pull the air box right out. Because I mean, really we got it this far and it's just a tie strap. So it's not the end of the world. And why do they have to make flashlights that strobe. Otherwise they'd just be lights. There we go. Nothing like taking side cutters to your, your C8 Corvette. <laughs> it's fine. There we go. Okay, now go to the other side and see if I can get those ones. Okay, I broke all the little tie straps. Now we're gonna put the top or the hatch down so we can open the trunk and the air box should pull right out. You'll have to close the door and then pull up on the roof, but don't step on the brake, just hit the, the power button. You could probably set that in the car. Don't step on the brake and hit the button once. I'm not. Okay, now uh, pull up on the convertible top button on the door. <laughs> I couldn't remember. <laughs> and then that'll put the top down. Because that's like putting the top up. There, just like that. Now, if this worked as it should, we should be able to just pull this air box out. <laughs> Famous last words. <sighs> I'm not gonna lie, maybe tipping the car on its side is a better way to add two quarts of oil. <clears throat> of course. Does it fit? Maybe I have to take the, the cover off to get this out. Because I mean it's forward and tip the it's like hitting right there but you would think why wouldn't they make that so it would come out pluggies that I forgot about. That one and this one. So that should be completely detached? Well, actually, I don't have to pull this out because this is what we're after 
right here. That little doohickey right there. And you can see this is one of the <clears throat> connectors that I had to cut off. I can't see your doohickey. Right there, that brass plug. Uh -huh. That's where we put the oil in. Wow. <sighs> Pretty, so yeah, pretty handy spot. <clears throat> Being able to pull that back is uh, made it a lot easier. Sucks that I had to cut that, but well, that one, that one, and that one. This one pulled out, and oh yeah, there was one here too. But uh, anyways, now we can get at that. <laughs> <sighs> it's just that easy. <sighs> okay. How tight is this going to be now? <clears throat> Fairly tight. <sighs> Damn my box. <laughs> the cars. Yeah. <clears throat> Watch your head on the... Ow! That was... There we go. Just had to snap it free. I didn't know if it was you that snapped. There. So Andrea's got a kitchen. That's the wrong door. A kitchen funnel. She's just putting prints inside because it's spitting rain. So <clears throat> the nice thing I think with doing it this way, guys, is you can just pour it in. So, and being that this is a silicone funnel, I'm gonna like screw it into the hole a little bit, like that. That's good. Love it. Okay. Till I get a purple one. Now let's just slowly pour it in. Actually, let's... <laughs> but wait. I'm just thinking, let's put paper towel around it first. In case of spillage. Yes. There. Okay. Here we go. Very slowly. There, the oil is all in it. The one thing that I really like about doing it this way is putting the oil in. I'm not using a tube. You know, I got a funnel. It's easy to pour in. Um, the only thing we had to sacrifice is some of those tie straps to snap on, which a person could get. Because these other ones, we can leave them hooked up. Well, I did leave them hooked up, so. <clears throat> so anyways, let's just pull this out. Actually, you know what? Let's pull the paper out from around it. Do you want to hold this assistant? Aye, aye, Captain. You'll leave that paper there. Do this so it doesn't goop it. Take my filler cap plug, put it back on. Just like that. Not even a drop spilt. <laughs> what are the odds on that? <clears throat> well, if it weren't for me, the odds would have been pretty good. <laughs> I sacrificed my funnel. Could still wash your funnel. Yeah, I've never used it in the kitchen anyway. Tighten this up. Now this has an O-ring on it, so it doesn't need to be super torqued. There. Done like dinner. Now we just have to do it all in reverse. And I, I think uh, the, the little plastic caps that are in here, I'm just gonna pop them out, the ones that were broke off, 
um, the Christmas tree plugs and then that way I can put a, a regular tie strap in there to hold it. So I think that is the plan. That was easy. <laughs> so now if I had new ones of these, I would put them on while this is out because it's really easy to put them on right now. Can you get those? Yeah. Amazon. Well. Or would you have to get them from? You could get them from GM or Princess Auto might even have them. In some ways, could go get some, but. Ah, it'll be fine. These back ones I can get from the back. So it's really these front ones, which I can tie strap. And these ones here, I can't get. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna cut these off, being careful not to damage any wires. There, see these ones are, are pushing ones. So you could get new ones of those as well. Because they are down here. Then you have to take it apart again. This one I'm gonna leave. You know, I should have done that. Yeah. The one on there, I uh, I left it in and I, I cut this part, but I could put the wire back in and just tie strap to it. So, so eh, you know, <sighs> live and learn. That tie strap and this one. There. <sighs> okay, so these. I'm gonna take these ones off. Should I take this? Yeah, I might as well just take this one off. There we go. Okay. Let's just make sure everything looks kosher. Tickety boo. And slide her back up and in. Well, it went that way a lot easier. But we're not there yet. <laughs> Yeah, so it just slipped right on. So I think the next thing to do. Sorry, I think then I was looking. <laughs> I think the next important thing to do is to make sure the intake pipe is on. Do up that hose clamp. Close this because this the back here is easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, do up there and then like here I can just use a black tie strap to uh, affix that back on. So. Okay, let's close. Uh... And remember guys, if you don't wanna make a mess of your brand new shirt from the Corvette Museum, put some paper over that. <laughs> so let's see, is the intake on? Yes, it is. It kinda of just slipped right on. That is awesome. <clears throat> I, uh, it's nice that that slipped right on because I was a little worried that it could, uh, could be a little more difficult. I don't know if you can see that, but it's on there. So let's put the sucker back together. Okay, so I got the, the intake hose clamp done up. It's kind of nice because it holds it in place like the intake clamp is attached to it. So I did it good and loose, but not too, well, I mean good and loose. So it just kind of slipped back on. I think I got lucky, but that's okay. Sometimes guy needs to get a little bit lucky. And now I'm gonna put this bolt in because um, those are the hard ones. So before I tie up the wires, I'm going to put the bolts in and this side for all intents and purposes is the easy 
of the front ones. Passenger side, not quite the same. You know, I should have figured out how you pop some of these lines off to save. Because look at my arm. Can you see that? It's a little scratched up from getting in here. This is by far the hardest one to do. So I'm going to try this. I put a quarter inch socket adapter onto my 3 8 drive. And I'll see if I can get in from the top. And the answer is... Maybe. Yes. There. Crazy, bro. Wow, that was way easier. Maybe I should have used these extensions when I undid it. <laughs> well, now you guys know. Use a long extension, go in from the top. It's easier. Will we ever have to do this again to this car? You never know. We do a transmission service or we'll just take it to a dealer. <laughs> I don't really trust them to do it. This side is so much nicer. You can just look in and see it. Unless you're short. Unless you're short, then you can't see it. <clears throat> there, that's tight. Pull this out, being careful not to drop any pieces. Do hickey back on. At least those ones came off nicely. Okay, so I'm just gonna put tie strap through here at the bottom to hold those and that should be good so if you take a look in there guys you can see my black tie strap <clears throat> holding the wire on now on the passenger side I can't get in there to save my life so I'm gonna just put one on the back side and the wires, I don't know if you can see very well in here. <clears throat> but you can see the wires, they sit a ways away. So I think we should be all right. And then when I do up the back, it should pull it over. But wait, maybe what I'll do in the, in the maybe what I'll do is I'll put this hatch down I'll leave the cover, engine cover off, button up the back, and then I can make sure that that wire is tucked over because I'm going to pull it over from the back side because trying to get in there is <clears throat> impossible. Whereas if I had those clips and when I had the air box out, put new ones on, then it'd just be a case of reaching down and pushing it on. But this is how we learn. Okay, so what I'm talking about is these wires here because I'm just gonna tie them to hold them over. So, but first let's put these bolts in. The beauty is that's gonna hold it right over. First, let's put this plug back in. Clip, snap. I'm gonna spin it so it's down there just keep it as far away from the exhaust as i can just like that snip that excess off put one in over here One's good. There. Now we can put these air plumes back in. Flumes. There. Yeah. All tight. So now we can put <clears throat> our trunk liner back in. And we'll just stick it in in reverse which it's pretty 
pretty easy, not gonna lie. Push that one down. Figure out where that one is. There we go. That's in, that's in. And we can put this up or under that. So getting this rubber on, I'm just holding it out a little bit so it's easy to pull the rubber up and when it sits back down, it sits on top of the, the felt trunk liner. This is a, the seal just kind of sits on top. It's a little harder as you get to the edge. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go, just tuck it down, Mike. There. Just like that. Really isn't that hard getting at the air box. Don't know that if I got it serviced somewhere, I'd want someone checking my air filter though because it'd be, you know, crawling in here. The other thing to consider is this would be a lot more difficult with the high wing, but I guess there's a price to looking cool. <laughs> I mean, that is if you like a high wing. I kind of like it, but I like my low wing too. Now we can close the trunk and Pop the hatch one last time to put the cover on, give an inspection. Now a lot of you guys are probably cringing because I don't have um, I don't have a cover over this, which I probably should have, but I did get the car PPF'd and ceramic coated. So the good thing about that is it's protected and I can just give it a, a quick wipe and uh, you know, that was my plan with wearing clean clothes. Didn't really plan on getting this dirty though. Okay, Andrea, pop the top. That's good. Okay. Let's just inspect -y spec -y. That looks good down there. I'm happy with how those wires are sitting. I'll check the other side. And yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, it's kind of hard to see down there, but right there, Actually, it's kind of right there, is uh, where the wire goes. And you can see it's kind of, it's pulled over towards the air box, being that I tied it off at the back. And that's a real bugger to get at. So I'm not going to put a tie strap back there. And I think it'll be fine. And, um, you know, and one day I'll have to pull it out again because, you know, I plan on keeping this car for a while. Unless we decide to trade it off on a C9. But... I don't think so. I don't like to sell my cars. Yeah, I don't like to sell my cars. You know, we just keep them. It's like, you know, some people have mortgage payments. Well, we have a mortgage payment and a Corvette payment. So I always have a Corvette payment. Ah, there we go. All the screws are done up. So now all that's left is to give it a little spray wax where, uh, where I rubbed on it. Person really should use a cover, but you know, like I said, it is PPF'd and ceramic coated. But um, the other thing I did is when I tightened this down, um, I pushed this in and tightened it first. And then after I'd done all these, I loosened it to push this down just to make sure there's a good seal there and there. So that's just what I did. Don't know if it's right, but it sure as heck ain't wrong. So this is just some, uh, Renegade Rebel Spray Wax. I kind of like it for, uh, you know, kind of call it like dry detail or, you know, when it's a little dusty. But, um, oh, look at that. Of course, I got some down there. It smells good, too. Okay, Andre, you can put your top up or your top down. Now all I got to do is figure out how to reset the transmission filter reminder which I think I can do in the control. I think I can do it on the steering wheel. So I'm gonna give that a whirl. Okay, now 
I have a mill lamp, AKA check engine light, and I think it's because I accidentally started it with that one plug off the air box. You know, because that would just be the way I do things. So we're gonna reset the transmission filter warning. Um, so dismiss, um, reset transmission filter. Reset transmission filter. Would you like to reset the values now? Yes. There. Ah, that was easy. Now we just need that little the light to go away. I'm pretty sure it's because I started it. Like, well, I started it and shut it off right away. So, and that plug was unplugged. Well, that night, you know, we were. Anyways, let's just hope it goes away. So yeah and I'm gonna take it for a drive because gosh darn it I want to drive around the block so I figure we'll just take her around the block and uh, let her warm up do a couple of key cycles and hopefully the mill light will go away I'm sure it will <clears throat> you can really see the reflection in the window like that Kind of a bummer, but you know what? When you're wearing your sunglasses, you don't really notice it. Sounds so good. You know, the C8 is such a good car. I I think I could daily drive it, even in like spring and fall. A um, little bit of snow no big deal as long as you have the right tires because you know it's got a heated steering wheel even and it's very comfy so that's just my thoughts anyways burbly 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 <sighs> Back on the lift. I don't know if you guys can tell, but... She's got some bark. And I love it, so... Anyways, guys, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe down below. And hopefully I don't screw anything else up. So take care.